is Joanne, and as a science educator, I often find myself curious about how the public perceives science, especially since a lot of the uh, information that makes it to the public is inaccurate or incomplete. And our science education system, for the most part, does not provide us with the tools we need to be able to interpret the data properly, and I think even some people in the fields of science do not truly understand how science works. And I think um, Science TV does not always offer that explanation. They tell us what's really cool about science, but do not tell us how science actually works, how it proceeds, how long it takes, how the information can then be misconstrued once it finally reaches us. Luckily, I've run across two wonderful books that uh, you could read both or either of them, and you would have the tools you need to understand scientific claims that are being made either in all honesty and sincerity or those that are made being made sort of nefariously so perhaps you would buy their product. So um, the first book I'm going to recommend is this one called Bad Science by Dr. Ben Goldacre. This book is from the UK. I had to have it imported um, but there is a version coming out in the United States I hope soon um, because it's definitely very worthwhile. Dr. Goldacre is a medical physician and he also writes for the UK Guardian and he has his own blog where he points out um, issues that arise in the healthcare field. And this book goes a step beyond the mere debunking genre where he describes the not only what's wrong with particular scientific stories, but he gives you the tools and tells you this is why it's wrong and these are the tools, if you apply these tools, you will not be fooled again should something like this come up. And he does this in his book. He has chapters about cosmetics and chapter about the placebo effect, chapters about um, nutritional studies and the importance of conducting fully randomized trials. He also uh, discusses how it is really uh, important to be able to do a systematic review of the scientific literature in order to understand which claims are actually valid across the board and not just choose the ones that match your uh, world view. He has a chapter on statistics he also discusses um, the MMR vaccine controversy um, and its uh, potential relationship to autism, which has been um, shown not to be true. Uh, so th his book is, is really quite large and comprehensive for the field of healthcare and also in being able to provide you the tools you need to understand these claims. I really enjoyed this book. I was not distracted by the fact that it, it has a very strong English flavor because of course we have Harry Potter and we know that's all very English. And So uh, I highly recommend this book, um, especially once it comes out in the United States version, um, but otherwise this one is good too. It's written in a lighthearted way but it has good scientific backing. The only thing I would change is I would add an index, so hello editor of the book at an index. <laughs> and um, the next book I'm going to recommend, highly recommend, this is probably the most important book I have read all year from a pedagogical standpoint and uh, from a standpoint of wanting people to understand how to um, interpret science, is this book called Lies, Damned Lies and Science. And of course she's playing off that book that was Lies, Damned Lies and Statistics. And this is written by Dr. Sherry C. Thaler, and she has a PhD in education, and she helps scientists present their information to the public. Her book covers all fields of science. She discusses global warming and genetically engineered foods, as well as health claims, and uh, chemistry and plate tectonics, and she really has a good grasp of the, the entire um, area of science and how things can happen all along the way from the time the scientist makes their discovery to the time it reaches our ears or eyes in the form of media information. So um, I love this book because she wrote it as an educator. She wrote it in such a way that it is, um, it's a manual, but it's not a boring dry manual. It has very pertinent information and it teaches you systematically the tools you need to be able to understand science. And I'm just, she has 
what's called contents at a glance. I'm going to quickly go through that. And then she has more fully fleshed out content. She does have an index. Um, and so the first book, first chapter of this book is called Potions, Plots, and Personalities. Understand how science progresses and why scientists sometimes disagree. Chapter 2, Who's Who? Identify those who hold a stake in an issue and what their positions are because, of course, we have conflicting issues. We're going to get conflicting information. Decisions, decisions. Elucidate all the pros and cons of a decision. Compare and contrast. Place alternatives in an appropriate context to evaluate the trade-offs. So we do make a trade-off when we make a decision about using product or, or pursuing a particular field of study. What happens if? Distinguish between cause and coincidence, and this is probably our biggest mistake when we look at the field of scientific information. Uh, specific or general, recognize how broadly the conclusions from a study may be applied. Fun figures, see through the number jumble. Both books have excellent uh, descriptions of how numbers can be used uh, properly or improperly in our understanding of scientific information. Society say discerning the relationship between science and policy, very important. Um, all the tricks in the book. Get past the ploys designed to simply bypass logic. And this happens a lot when someone really wants to uh, trick you out of your money, for instance. Fitting the pieces together. Know how to seek information to gain a balanced perspective. Very good chapter. My favorite, favorite part of this book is at the very end, and it's called 20 Essential Applications of the Tools. So she provides all these tools, and you learn how to apply them. I would definitely recommend this book to educators, to anyone who wants to know how to use this information. I think this book could even be turned into a video series, uh, instructional series that could be shown in classrooms a uh, little at a time. I want to thank you for holding out this long and for listening to me talk about Bad Science by Dr. Ben Goldacre, which will be coming out in the U.S., and this book, Lies, Damn, Lies in Science by Sherry C. Thaler. Both books incredibly important in helping you understand how to interpret science as it is currently done and presented to um, us as a public. Thank you so much.